Okay, good morning. Uh. I'm just going to do a very uh, quick update on the US markets. Lah. So the US market uh, made a double top you know, yesterday. Uh, we don't know whether this is going to continue again later tonight. Uh. If it does continue downwards, uh, it's going to be quite bearish. And if it is bearish, I think it's going to correct more than this. Uh. So like I said before, I believe that is going to correct at somewhere around uh, at least 453 la, or 454, 455 around here. Uh, that level wasn't reached in the first correction. So I think most likely now if it does fall, la, so if tonight it does fall again, la, there is a very likely scenario, higher, higher high probability that it's going to come down. To somewhere here like this 458 at least uh. yeah about 458 like that so it's gonna come down uh, definitely it's gonna come down right here so what I see is in the market is that there's a lot of hesitation uh. right so I think a lot of the participants feel that yeah it's kind of expensive now so everybody say like yep it's kind of expensive now so from what I see uh, the feeling I get is like everybody is feeling it eh. So it's not only applied to us. Uh, I think other countries also kena, you know. They also kena like that. So I think one of the major uh, reasons for that is actually uh, because the not TNX. What the hell am I doing? Uh? Uh, maybe yeah, actually TNX. I think the interest rate. Uh, uh, they went up past this one. Uh. So they just jumped up suddenly. Uh. So yeah, I think it's a very, it is a major cause of concern. If this keeps going up, uh, so the first quadrant, uh, the first top, the first that one has been broken. Okay. So when it's like that, that means people are expecting higher rates. So they want higher rates for the 10 years. So they don't want anything below 3.8 like that. Uh. Oh. 3.7, 3.8 they don't want. So they want 4% at least. Uh. Okay, so I'm just telling you, uh, that's what I think is happening. So other than the TNX, uh, another one that is a huge cause for concern is the VIX. Uh. Uh, the VIX is starting to go back up. Okay, uh, not only that, uh, now it's actually going up above the 50 MA. Okay, so whenever the VIX go up to 50 MA, okay, it means we are in deep shit. Lah. The market is going to correct downwards. Right. So if you have believed uh, Adam Koo and bought Amazon uh, uh, after he made the video, uh, Amazon trended downwards. Lah. Okay. Now, although Amazon trended downwards, do I believe what you say? No? So Amazon is basically a monopoly. It has so many modes. The brand is there. Right, everybody knows about Amazon. Then the second one is the 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 switching cost is quite high, you know. If you switch from Amazon, right, because Amazon Prime, right, it's so amazing, next day shipping and all that. You know, people get people love that, you know, right. People love next day shipping and all that stuff, right. And the vendors, if they switch, the switching cost is going to be very high. They're going to lose a lot of sales, man. Right, networking in fact is the biggest uh, portal, one of the biggest portal really for the US. In fact, it's almost a monopoly, right? Because of Amazon Prime is almost a monopoly. So I think Amazon is not only that; it has economies of scale. So Amazon is unbeatable. The modes are too crazy. Okay, the only way Amazon can be beaten is regulations and laws right to break it up okay break up the prime and the the government tells them you have to break up prime you have to break up your logistics and your e-commerce because it's too high it's too powerful nobody else can compete with you you are creating some product advantage that is just so amazingly powerful there's no other way. Uh, there's no. Uh, there's no way uh, a medium-sized company can compete with you because you control the logistics so much. Because they cannot offer offer the prime. 
And not only that, you are subsidizing your e-commerce with your AWS. Okay, so Amazon, uh, if they were to raise prices double, a lot of people are going to stay because they have no choice. They're going to stay in the Amazon portal. Right. So I'm just saying uh, Amazon is actually, uh, I think it's a wild card. Uh. It could either be broken up by the government or it can double its prices maybe five years from now. And it's going to experience high, bu high bouts of profits, right? I hope you all get it, right? They're going to experience high bouts of profit. So Amazon is just a monopoly la, that is unbeatable. Okay? Why is it unbeatable? Because it's financed by AWS. So you all must understand la, A, B, and C. If you all understand A, B, and C, so I can tell you uh, what's going to happen in CD and E. So I think Amazon is a buy. La. Even if it does go down, la, I still think Amazon is a buy. La. What level? I don't know. I think now it's pretty fair. It's, it's, it's not that bad. Let's see how it goes. Uh, Amazon from last time really can flip the switch and take profits in the e-commerce side. But it didn't want to. Okay. It chose not to. So if Amazon does drop, maybe buy a bit. But then, yeah. It's still quite exp you won't earn a lot la, by buying Amazon. La. Whereas if Hong Kong you buy uh, all the stocks at like KWeb, uh, MC, uh, you got a you got higher chance to earn more money later la, maybe ten years in the future la. What about the spirit? Holy shit! Huh? Any idea what happened? Oh, they are letting it go bankrupt. Huh? If they are letting it go bankrupt, then uh, the other airlines may be a buyer. Delta came down quite significantly, at 37, uh, yeah. Maybe buy a bit of Delta again. Uh. I think Delta is still a buy. Uh. I don't know what you all think, uh, but... To me, I think it's still a buy. Uh. The financials look okay, la, Delta.